Thank you. Uh, no disclosures. <clears throat> So uh, legal intervention is defined as any injury due to any encounter with any law enforcement official. It's an ICD code, Y35, and we chose to study this because, as all of us know, trauma secondary to legal intervention has become important uh, to address. There's been recent high-profile incidents that have generated a lot of attention. Previous studies examining this, particularly in the pediatric population, are few. We were granted access to the National Violent Death Reporting System. It's a CDC database that encompasses all violent deaths, homicides, suicide, et cetera. It also has unique data elements like narrative text written by law enforcement officials and uh, medical examiners. Uh, we extracted uh, cases of legal intervention leading to death and divided uh, that population into two groups nonviolent groups and violent groups, and we compared them looking for similarities and differences. As far as our classification scheme, uh, we defined violent status as being in possession of a weapon, engaged in a violent crime, or law enforcement reporting justified use of force. Uh, additionally, we combed through the narrative text, and to remove bias, we used a machine learning algorithm called XGBoost to analyze this narrative text for key words that might suggest violence or nonviolence. And finally, once all these cases were separated, we hand annotated, we manually reviewed all nonviolent cases to make sure there are no false positives. Here are our results, uh, 1,281 cases of death after legal intervention in ages 12 to 26 years. Deaths among younger children were rarely seen, whereas as the population got older, we saw more cases of death. Most legal intervention deaths were in males, and the cause of death in nearly all cases was firearm, even if non-lethal force was at some point attempted. African American youth accounted for 45% of deaths in this study, compared to just 22% of deaths in the overall U.S. population for that same age group. 7% of the study was categorized as nonviolent. 92.5% of the individuals were classified as violent. Non-lethal force was not frequently used, but it was used more frequently to subdue nonviolent versus violent individuals. Deaths due to firearm were higher in violent versus nonviolent individuals. And there was no significant difference in mental health status between individuals designated as violent and nonviolent. Compared to the overall population, African Americans were not more likely to be categorized as violent. White individuals had a 46% increased odds of being in possession of a weapon when compared to African Americans. African Americans were not more likely to be involved in a violent crime. That said, African Americans had a 59% increase odds of exposure to law enforcement reported justified use of force as compared to white youths. African Americans were also less likely to be intoxicated than the overall population. However, white and Hispanic individuals were more likely still to receive non-lethal force while African Americans were more likely to experience lethal force. So in conclusion, most decedents of legal intervention can be classified as violent. Non-lethal force was infrequently used and most people died of firearm. African Americans were disproportionately represented among uh, youths who died due to legal intervention, but they were not more likely to be classified as violent. It may be possible to save lives more frequently and by more frequently and efficaciously using non-lethal force, particularly in the nonviolent population. Furthermore, we need to better understand justified use of force as this might reveal additional life-saving opportunities. Thank you.